you want to go first? Yeah, yeah, no, I can start. Hey, hi, my name is Matthew. Uh, so as you can hear, I'm from France. And uh, I'm a visual effects editor on the vendor side. I worked uh, at the moment at Animal Logic. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it for me. So if you want to introduce yourself, Alex. <laughs> Sure, I'll pray from there. Um, um, oh, same job, but I'm a visual effects editor on the vendor side, currently working for ILM, Industrial Light and Magic in Sydney. Um, yeah, just, just started that job recently and just come from Animal Logic, which is where you're at now. Okay, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> um, and how did you end up being at ILM? Like, what's your, how did you start uh, before becoming a visual effects editor? Like, I'm not from Sydney originally. I'm mm -hmm. from country town Wagga Wagga, um, which was where okay. I did the, <laughs> you know, It's halfway between Sydney and Melbourne. Okay. Um, yeah, oh, that's where I, oh, they have a university there. That's where I did the animation visual effects degree. Um, and then moved to Sydney and became a runner at uh, Fuel VFX, a company that was in Newtown. Um, so that's, that's where I started doing the IO or running. I was making client coffees for a while okay, and yeah. then started doing daily reviews and the IO, the ingested plates and media coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and then into editorial and visual effects editing there. And then I've read Animalogic. So I haven't had many spots I've been at, but that's where I came from. No, it's interesting yeah. because I, it's exactly pretty much the same story. Like I studied visual effects in France before. And uh, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was hesitating at that time between being a director or director of photography. And uh, visual effects was quite new um, at that time. It was like more than 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I studied a school over there and I found out that it wasn't for me at all. Like I didn't have the patience to, to work, as we say, like frame by frame for like many months yeah. on, the, on, on the same shot. So, okay after I like, switched to, to editing, which is more like a quick pace, um, quick, quick, quick job to do. So yeah, this is pretty much, pretty much something. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, when did you come to Australia then for so, work? Um, no, it, <laughs> it was my choice to come. I mean, I chose to come to Australia. Like it wasn't for work. Like before I, like after being, like after being graduated uh, from school, like I worked two years in Paris. I'm from south of France, actually, from a, like a small city called Nîmes. And uh, so I went up to Paris uh, for two years where I finished my studies. I worked as an assistant editor uh, on movie trailers mm -hmm. and promoting, uh, where I learned like all the avid stuff, uh, like how, how it works on production schedule, um, like basically they pick me up and they throw me into the, and they threw me into the battle. <laughs> really. uh, so I learned a lot from that. And after I became a video editor, uh, the same on to, to, to make movie trailers, promo reels. And I was working as well a bit as a, as a motion graphics uh, for DVDs and Blu-rays, like making new news and this kind of stuff for, yeah. for, DVD, for DVDs and Blu-rays. And after two years, I got a bit tired of it. I mean, it's not tired of the job. It's more like I was completely burnt out, actually. Uh, like very long hours and people were shooting at you everywhere. So after being graduated, of, uh, after two years, like I became completely like, burnt out. And uh, I was looking for something else not to do, but in my mind, I was like, I, I need to go somewhere else. I need to. I don't know, I need to challenge myself and uh, uh, I need to move on really to uh, try to find something else. So I decided to go to New Zealand uh, in 2014 and uh, trying to find a job there. I wanted to work actually on, on, on Avatar 2, it was, it was my goal, uh, because at that time they were saying like, oh, they're filming Avatar 2 now in New Zealand. Uh, so I was like, oh, I need to be there, perhaps it's a new Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood thing like building, you know what I mean? So. I was like, oh, I really, I, I really want to try that out and try to work for Weta or, or on the movie. Um, so I went there, it didn't happen at all. <laughs> I didn't have any visual effects experience over there. So, but I, I worked as an assistant editor on commercials and a bit as a video editor on corporate videos, which was nice. But unfortunately my visa, I went there with the working on the visa and unfortunately my visa expired. Uh, so I went to Australia, which was the closest country. Mm -hmm. 
for two years and a half. And unfortunately, nothing worked out for me, professionally speaking, in, in, in Australia. Uh, I was struggling to find work, so doing like small jobs on the side. Uh, and then I got a phone call from one of my friends who was working as a compositor uh, in London. And she told me, oh, we are looking for a visual effects editor in my company. Are you interested in it? I'm like, yeah, sure. But I've never been a visual effects editor before. I have no idea what, what we're doing. Guys, I've been an assistant editor. But I heard about visual effects editing, but I didn't know what, what it was about. And I uh, had an interview with, uh, with, the, with, with my boss. And like, he was like, no, OK, like, but, but, but you need to come in two weeks. Like, we need you in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I flew from Sydney to London. Uh, yeah, yeah, I stayed there for almost a year and a half. Uh, and then I was doing a long distance relationship with my girlfriend at that time. So at some point, uh, I decided to go back to Australia, where I worked at uh, Milfin Adelaide for over a year. Uh, and after I went to Brisbane to work in the VGFX company uh, on commercials. And then I had them to transition from commercials to feature film and uh, for over a year. And then I studied at Animalogic like, very recently, a couple of months ago. So, yeah. yeah. So, that was more details than my story. Sorry? That was a bit more details than my story. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, this, can... this, this, is, this is how, yeah, this is how I studied as a visual effects editor. Uh, <laughs> like, it was a misunderstanding of my boss because he saw that I would be just running dailies. Uh, but it wasn't the case. Like I was doing my like, normal yeah. stuff, and um, <laughs> yeah, but it, which, which, which was cool. Which was cool. Yeah, cool. And you enjoyed it, obviously. Still doing. Yeah, it. yeah. No, I really enjoyed it because it was a small company as well. So in a small company, as a visual effects editor, you're doing a bit of everything, uh, yep. from running dailies, uh, interesting plates, uh, make sure that the color space is right because we are using New Studio. Uh, so yeah, we need to you, you could control like the color space, control that kind of thing. Uh, and then yeah, there yeah, was, as I say, reading dailies and then the meetings with the clients as well, uh, I was involved in that, um, yeah. creating, creating mini cuts, um, yeah, this kind, of, this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. And then after I, when I went to Milton and Adelaide, it was like a bigger company. And this is where I found out that, yeah, in a big company, you're more restricted. You're doing like a certain, a certain thing, you're not doing everything, but you're doing like a very specific task. They must be, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's basically yeah, what I, I mean, this is, this is my story. And yeah, what, what I enjoy the most in that job is like, uh, you're really in the middle of the spider web. Um, what I call in the middle of the spider web. So you're dealing with the production artists, sometimes clients as well that ask you question. Where well, like yeah, uh, it's not a creative uh, job. I propose like you're not editing, you're not doing anything creatively speaking. You're not editing a movie or you're not creating visual effects. You just like you're in the middle of everything, trying to organize. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't you know if this is your yeah, your experience as well. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's similar. You, you're not in control of that creative edit, mm -hmm. but you translate that from the creative team into the mm -hmm. studio that you're working at, being the vendor side. Mm -hmm. That's what sort I of found. And then when the vendor's creating visual effects or heavily animated scenes, you you tend to mm -hmm. tend to help those teams with adjusting the edit and then gently pitching that back to client mm -hmm. as proposed mm -hmm. timings and that's always a fun relationship to build but that's that's where the creative can come in yeah exactly I mean, this is where you especially when you work afterwards with assistant editors uh, this is where you because you, you like to be honest we're not learning this stuff at school at all uh, like this side of the job i mean but from my side we never, we never learned visual effects editing. It was like a bit of, yeah, lots of video editing, a bit of assistant editing on the side, but we don't have that job. So like you need to teach as well assistant editors to how to do the job and like, yeah. how to make it look good. So there is also like a mentorship uh, skill that, 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 <clears throat> that takes in place. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and I didn't have any sort of editorial training. I didn't do any yeah, exactly. Film schools and in, in that traditional sense of 
yeah. an edit room. Yeah. yeah. Like, what kind of software do you use as a visual effects editor? Actually, did you use only Havid or did you use other systems? Um, when I was starting, it was Final Cut. There was a bit of Final Cut mm -hmm. still, Final Cut Nine, I guess. Um, or seven. And then, no, but... <laughs> or seven. Sorry, yes, of course. <laughs> there was no seven. Still seven, and then we jumped to ten, and we to ten, yeah. first, then. <laughs> and then it was all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then into Avid, um, and most of the client productions are still in Avid, so we can take a lot of metadata from their mm -hmm. their scenes that they they turn over if they do turn over those those files. Mm -hmm. um, not generally embedded media, but just the metadata from those AAFs. Um, so that's probably the reason we're still leaning into Avid. Um, it has its quirks, that's for sure, but mm -hmm. I've actually become quite efficient in it. I think sometimes it can be quicker and cleaner than Premiere, which is certainly not what you think out of the out of the gate when you start yeah. with Avid. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I studied, I mean, as a video effects editor, I studied with New Studio, uh, which was like, wow, that was completely mind-blowing. It's not to editing software to edit, properly speaking, but it's a software for visual effects where you yep. can ingest a bunch of plates, like control the frame, the frame range of the shots, the color space, and uh, yeah, other stuff. Um, but you can, you, can use that. Hmm? you can use that for plate ingestion too. So yeah, you can exactly. have offline media and then bring in the other. Exactly, yeah. That's, 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 yeah. Also one of the big, big, that's also one of the big difference between small and, and big companies. In big companies, they now they try to make that no, they, they, they try to involve more software developers to ingest the plates uh, rather than in, in small companies. Like they, they can't pay, uh, obviously, uh, software developers with that job. So that's why Mix Studio is super um, helpful with that. It's like you can ingest you know, as many plates as you want uh, in the yeah. system. And then from that, yeah, check everything. Um, so yeah. com comparing to Avid or Premiere, it's more like, yeah, uh, you, can't, you can't do that on Premiere or Avid. You're checking the proxies, really, what's, what has been already ingested. You're not ingesting the plates, but you're checking what has been ingested, which is a bit different. Um, yeah. Yeah. And um, you haven't used that for reviews, have you? You're not... uh, for reviews? Um, you mean Nuke Studio? Yeah, didn't. Uh, yeah, no, we, we were running dailies with New Studio, but it's not like DaVinci Resolve where DaVinci Resolve like can cache properly uh, plates. Once it's cached, it's cached. New Studio is a bit jerky about that. So actually, yeah. for reviewing dailies or like shots, we were using, if we couldn't use the EXRs, we were using that. Uh, yeah. But uh, no, it, it's, a, it's a great tool, definitely. After I used Premiere, which was like a completely different uh, system to manage. So it's also one of the difficulties for me with, with this job. It's when you change, when you go into another, to, to another company, like you need to not unlearn everything, but you need to relearn <laughs> the, <laughs> some, so, some, yeah, some stuff like how the software works, where, 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 does the file, where do the files live on the, on the system? Yep. So you just need to relearn the same thing. Just yeah. Relearn the same thing in a different way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> in a different way. And suddenly you're like, oh, I can't do that with the software, but I can do that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's uh, for me, it's, I, one um, of the, it's, it's, it's one of the most difficult part of, of the service when I go to another company. I'm like, ah, I need to relearn all that stuff. It takes a lot of time to, to get yeah. everything. I, um, the other stuff I use a lot is not a bit, not an editor, but um, like spreadsheets and text editors and FileMaker mm -hmm. and just that sort of data manipulation stuff. Yeah. And been getting into Python a bit to help help collate all of that into one mm -hmm. spot. Yeah, I feel like yeah. it's one of the future of the job is to learn how to make your own tool using Python. Uh, I feel like yeah, it's probably the future for 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 a job. Uh, to be able to build up our own tools and to make things faster. Yeah. Uh, because once you receive the place, everyone is like, oh, receive the place, receive the place, where are the shots, like, where are they? You want them in the system now? <laughs> <laughs> yesterday. Uh, yeah, yesterday. So, uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to do what a typical day looks like for you? Oh, typical day, yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure, like, typical day is the same as you. Like, the first thing, you check your emails. <laughs> <laughs> to check like what the client has sent, what the, what 
what are the requests from production or artist are. Uh, so it's basically the first thing you check in the emails. And from that, it depends. Uh, like it, it depends on the day. Sometimes they can request a mini cut. The like production can request uh, a, a mini cut uh, for like to do before lunch or at a certain time. And then like, throughout the day, throughout the day, yeah, you receive a bunch of stuff. Uh, to do like training, can be like training dailies, creating mini cuts. Clients, if the client is in, is, is not local, is in Los Angeles or London, obviously he might send you uh, a package at some point during the day. So, um, you will need to, uh, yeah, you will need to download the, the, the package, and, uh, check what this is. And of course, yeah, artists are asking you how oh, I'm working on this frame range, is it okay? And you're checking the, uh, is shot against the against the edit, and of course, we're like, no, it's not, it's a long term range. We receive another, yes, we got the right time. yeah, yeah, it was a <laughs> retime, or the resize is missing. It's, yeah, yeah, no, that's it, is about the same, I guess. It's checking the emails and checking what clients turned over that day, mm -hmm. and then taking that into the pipe. So, if it's plates or offlines, mm -hmm. um, ingesting it all, and then providing production with that difference mm -hmm. report and what's new and what's changed and mm -hmm. what, what they need to do next. Um, and then checking department work from all the dailies that have come in that day. So it's making sure that all the shots still line up to the offline. Yeah, mm -hmm. same, same type of thing. Yeah, exactly. And for you, what are the pros and cons about the job actually for you, uh, from your experience? Um, I, yeah. I think you touched on that um, with your piece of, you're not just a tiny bit of the puzzle, you're, you're a little bit of every puzzle. You're helping production, you're helping supervisors, you're helping artists down to the frame level of the mm -hmm. shot and you're helping um, department leads looking after the, their assets through that entire scene. So whether that's lighting or animation or layouts or even camera tracking or right down into the details of every department, you, you get exposed to all of those, mm -hmm. those aspects of the shot. Um, which I enjoy. And then, as you said, you can then take that further and then take that back to client and have those discussions uh, with client side and bring it back into the production of the department of the studio you're in. So it, it's that's, I think, the big enjoyment for me is seeing it all come together and assisting that that side of it. Mm -hmm. You see an offline and then in the end you deliver the final thing completely, mm -hmm. not just a bit, but that's always been a bit exciting for me. Yeah, no, it's pretty much the same, really. What I really enjoy is being in the middle, as I said, of this paddle work. So enjoying like organizing things, trying to, yeah, organizing, communicating as well uh, with everybody because you're not communicating only with the producers, but also with the artists, uh, which is quite cool to see like they work or, or, or their works are evolving at the time. Um, uh, and also what I, I really enjoy, it's uh, like we're not part of the creative process, but you can see, as you said, like, oh, you start with the layout department, so you can see like this rough camera movement and rough animation, and suddenly you see like the animation, then lighting, then compositing. So you see all the different steps uh, to create a shot, which is like super rewarding. Uh, I guess as a VJFX editor, because one of the things as well is that we are pretty much the first one to see the edit, actually, which is like for me like a new toy that you want to, <laughs> what you, what you yeah. want to grab. Like you're like, oh, no, it's a new edit, like it's a new, a new sequence, like I'm really excited about that. After 20 versions, you're like, oh, I'm tired of it. <laughs> want to say it again. <laughs> yeah. and something else. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's something that I really enjoy as well. After, of course, it means that sometimes you need to work very long hours, uh, which is, can be uh, quite painful sometimes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, really for me, the, the thing to, to make sure that we have to do this job is to make sure that, yeah, uh, we try to organize everything as much as possible um, with production, artists, just to make sure that the communications, like, Constant, yeah. uh, to make sure that yeah, everyone has what they need. Uh, well, what's the plan for today? Uh, like how many shots are we sending like today? And that kind of stuff. Uh, 
One thing that I was really interested in that job as well is to teach assistant editors. So what's your approach regarding mentoring people? Um, I remember I trained assistant editors who just came out from school, like 19, mm -hmm. 20. So yeah, how did you? I don't think I've had quite that. We've found that, um, I've always found that trying to employ people, it's always tough to find someone with a lot of experience. You find someone who's done assisting work or creative work and um, you often get people from TV who have done sort of that assistant editing or conform editing uh, or assembly edits and um, it's explaining that difference in the job that this is you, you won't have as much technical you won't have as much creative hands-on with the edit you're relaying frame by frame information that you need to use these five plates and they need to be Retimed in this way, and they need to map back to this shop frame number. Um, so that's that's the challenge I find in that initial um, what what the job is. Mm -hmm. um, so then, how I mentor people to that, I don't know. I don't know what tricks I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, I Are think, you shorting at them? Are you saying like? I think. Um, I think there needs to be a fair understanding that whenever someone comes into a facility that regardless of the skill set that the person has, that they you need to be forgiving on how they um, how, how much time they need to take to understand how we need to do a certain thing. And in some cases doing that thing might be and seem convoluted, but it pays off in these other ways. So it might be a bit more work for us, but all of the artists will get this much more information mm -hmm. and it'll show up in their tool sets in this way. Um, so those things are just allowing people to. Yeah, no, I agree. No, I agree. Actually, all the time I teach uh, new assistants uh, about the job. I try to remember myself who I was when I studied my first job as an assistant editor, where like people were shouting at me, shouting at me, and uh, thing like, "Oh, we need this now. Like, can you can you do that?" I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, so yeah, I try to remember myself how I was, and uh, like when I finished school, and uh, what kind of more mentor I wish I could have at that time. Um, so it's really something that I try to keep in mind, and uh, I try to like be patient with the editors. If, as long as they are willing to learn, that's fine with me. I don't care if technically they are like. They are not good, or as long as they're willing to learn, that's fine. Uh, because they will, it's 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 a learning curve, really. Uh, as we yeah. say, we don't we don't know that job at school. Uh, I never met a visual effects editor before, so yeah, it's 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 completely completely new to them. So yeah, you need to have patience, but also like need to enjoy teaching people. Uh, and make sure that even if they do mistakes, especially when you just came out from school, you're like, oh my god, I made a mistake. I'm going, I'm going to get fired. I'm going to get like, uh, people are going to shout at me. Like it, it was my memory or fear when I when I got my first job actually. Um, I'm trying to know if you make a mistake, that, that's fine. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. We'll just fix it and that's it. Um, like as, long, as long as you know what was going on. Like if an artist yeah. is asking you like, oh, how come this plate doesn't have the right frame range or how oh, come I'm missing information? That's fine as long as it's like, you fix it and, and, and that's it after you move on. Um, yeah, so, no, I think that's that's part of it. And from there, then you'll learn and um, adapt. And you'll become, um, you, you'll understand from that experience. I don't think there's any reason to yell at someone in those no, situations. No, yeah, of course. Well, I mean, in the, in the people that I they can, they can yell at you for, for a reason or another. But like, yeah, I really try to make sure that they relax and uh, they understand and that they understand everything. And also it's something that I tell them, something that takes time, time as well to, to learn. Uh, yeah. Like allow yourself at least a month or even month <laughs> to, <laughs> to, 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 to learn the job properly. Like, uh, like you just need to make mistakes and learn from them. And yeah. Um, this is like, yeah, oh, it works the best, at least for me. Like, make mistakes, okay, people yeah. are not happy, it like, doesn't matter. Okay. I, I, enjoy, um, I, I enjoy having people from those different backgrounds because this is most of the time something that I can actually learn from them too. Mm -hmm. I've 
I've not spent hours grouping and syncing clips, so yep. I don't have <laughs> keyboard shortcuts set out like a gamepad to yeah. <laughs> <very> <laughs> <efficient> <laughs> like they, some people. <laughs> um, so I enjoy finding new tricks inside Avid as well, mm -hmm. where people have had different experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing with Avid, it's so huge that you always <laughs> end up finding new stuff about how to use a drug. <laughs> And uh, actually, you talk about Python a little bit. Like, do you create your own tools with Python, like especially on Habit, or do you use Python on something else? Because it's um, something that I've never done before. I know with Nuke Studio, you can write write out your own your own tools, really, like make sure that you, you create your own menu, your, your own tools in Nuke Studio. But it's something that I've never done before. Yeah, no, Avid's not that open, mm -hmm. so that's not as easy to. Mm -hmm. to do um, but taking AAF data or um, ALE data and the information about the shots out mm -hmm. or EDL data and just passing that so you can um, move it into a spreadsheet for shotgun or you can generate reports to understand shots that are dropped or new or mm -hmm. extensions or trims that I'm finding that Python is helping a bit there for me Mm -hmm. um file maker can do it but it's a bit heavy and closed as well so. yeah file maker, right? <laughs> yeah. Do you, yeah do you use file maker a lot or like personally uh, i never i never had to use it on the vendor side i know on the client side is i use it pretty much all the time but it's something that i never had to use before uh, on the vendor no, side. no i've just i've just used it a couple of times to help tracking plates and mm -hmm. shot mapping there on in the vendor side but and I've always um, found that if you control that database, then the questions are just coming to you and you have to maintain it and support it. Mm -hmm. And in a big studio, that just doesn't, or for me, managing it singularly hadn't become an option. So mm -hmm. it's always getting the data and putting that into a bigger database that's supported by the company. So it's using shotgun at that point mm -hmm. or proprietary stuff is, is much more beneficial and mm -hmm. maintaining another copy in your own file maker I've found. Mm -hmm. So no, um, except for using the client's file maker when they send over their camera sheets and you can find the, the rushes in there and mm -hmm. map lenses and, and camera backs to plates you received. Mm -hmm. So not building it in, in the vendor side, but yeah, using it. And um, I guess the next question, that people would like to know, especially when you work in industry, like how do you manage to have this work-life balance? Uh, because sometimes this industry can like, ask you a lot <laughs> to pull like, out like, long, long, long hours uh, at work. Like sometimes, yeah, I was feeling at some point that for over a year I was spending more time at work than at home. Uh, yeah. like, like I don't have kids. I mean, I don't have kids. I don't have kids at the moment. I, I know that it's a real question that some people uh, ask themselves. It's like, wait, I'm a single mother or a single father. Like, I need to uh, take some, when, some time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I definitely projects are different, and, and projects have, I find an arc, you'll, you, you'll be receiving all of the shots at once and they need it all at once. And those, those weeks can be late nights. and that's that will die down and and then there'll be like a, a lull where departments are working on shots and you're getting updates but you're not as needed as much and then the film will deliver and you're needed a bit more again to check what's going out more and check more deliveries you know it's, i find those waves come and go with with those productions so it's not it's not like that forever yeah. <laughs> if, if if you found that so you've had a year it's pretty rough um so I find that it's a week here and there, but most of the time, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got I've got a kid and another one on the way, so okay. Oh, okay. Totally yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. yeah. Now I know, like from from my experience, but like uh, even when I got my first job, like, the, the demand to stay at work was like um, enormous. Like I, I remember my. My record, I think, was was during my, my first job. Like I worked from 10 a.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, something like that. I needed to come back in the the next day in the afternoon to, to to finish the work. So yeah, it's an industry that can be quite demanding. Uh, it certainly can. Yeah. 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 
but yeah, I know that I'm, 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 I'm not the right person to give advice about that because I'm <laughs> like it's like it's something that I should be more aware of uh, because I know I can be quite emotional and I know sometimes it, it happened before like I can be super angry at, at people and, and uh, stressed and, and yeah it's stressed yeah. and and uh, but it's although it's although like uh, how do you how do you manage this mental issue like as i said before in paris that like, i burned down for after two years of work i was like uh, what am i doing is it something that i really want but but i think you really need to be passionate about about this industry as well uh, and and, and, and okay. be mindful about that um that lot of people are, it's something that i'm still learning actually uh, because like i'm very bad with uh, I wouldn't say with myself, but like I know that um, when, when, when I've got a job to do, I like to focus at like 200% on it, and sometimes I forget myself on the way. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. Keep talking to people, keep that, keep that balance in check. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, know, I, I know it's very hard for, 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 for me, but for some people, say so that it's got uh, it's a bit too much now. Yeah, I, I, I haven't found jobs like that. I haven't okay. um, done jobs in the high pressure deliveries where you're delivering a live mm -hmm. telecast or a new episode every week and you are doing those late 4 a.m. nights, but back to back. Then I think if, you, if you're up for that, if you want to get into the industry and you're looking for that experience and you're okay with doing that, then mm -hmm. find out up front what those hours are in those jobs. Mm -hmm. um, because they do exist as you've experienced. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess when you're 20 years old, like you just finished school, you're like, okay, like, you know, you have this, like, this dynamism. Like, <laughs> you're young, you're motivated. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're motivated. Like, yeah. But uh, arriving at 30, you're like, hey, yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've, um, I've found that the, it's definitely, you, you can get a good understanding of the projects that you're about to go into and that there will be a deadline for within those projects and at the end, of course. Um, so you can manage the expectation there and, and as long as you're aware with your employer and your boss that you're not, well, I mean, that won't be hopefully at the same time asking you to do 15 hour days for mm. the entire year. I find that it is only mm. at the pressure points where yeah. needed, yeah. But yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> was it something actually? Yeah, it's, a, it's a good question because, uh, as we say, we never we, we don't learn about that job at school. Is it something that you wanted to do? I didn't know it existed when mm -hmm. I was at school, so no. That's where I, I went through that course, thinking I'd be an artist or an animator or compositor. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't, and as I said, I wasn't in a film school, so editing wasn't much of a mm -hmm. position that I was looking at when I was studying. Um, so coming out and finding the visual effects editing was, was a good fit for me because it's it's a balance between there's a, a technical side too which I'm into but not super technical so mm -hmm. I, I've got enough to to keep me interested in that role mm -hmm. um, but no I didn't know it was a I didn't know it was a position. Mm -hmm. No it's pretty much yeah, the same the, the, like the same for me like I I was seeing advertisement online about like um, companies who wanted to that, that wanted to recruit visual effects editor. But I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> it seems, seems like an assistant editor on the visual effects side. Uh, and then when I found out, yeah, when I got my first job in London as a visual effects editor, I found out that yeah, it's it's pretty cool being in the middle of this creative thing, even though we are not creative people. My like, position is not creative. But like being in the middle of um, of the creation of visual effects, I found I found it like quite rewarding. Rewarding. Yeah, I think the storytelling aspect too of where we're sitting, and there are visual effects elements that can tie into that story. That mm -hmm. that for me, I found a lot of interest in, and that's where I was steered away from a, mm -hmm. that creative creation of a shot or an element or an asset. That goes into that and more to the see it all come together and what that story is behind that yeah and do you see yourself working on the client side at some point or 
I haven't considered it, but I think that um, I think that's can be prone to more of those longer hours. I think it can be prone. I'm not. I'm not super keen on looking for new work every yeah. six months, year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's what's kept me from mm -hmm. wanting to jump into that world. Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. Like I, I just say, I never. Had, I mean, in my experience, I, I never was a freelancer. I always had a contract or a full time role in in the company. So yeah, but I found out that when you step into uh, this part of the like this part of the job as a visual effects editor, it's quite easy to, to find a new job if, once you finish your contract after a year or two or, or, or whatever. Uh, because now visual effects are so demanding, uh, especially you know, with uh, the pandemic and like streaming platforms like Netflix or Disney Plus or Amazon, like, like they're asking like more and more visual effects on their, on their show. So I found it that it's, Pretty much easy uh, once you have when you step in in this position to find a new job, but no, it's yeah. My, yeah, it's my yeah, it's my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Yeah, I, I think I think it is. I don't think that that's a big fear I should have mm -hmm. not finding work, but I um, just know it's something that would play on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, I've also found that Animal had had a lot of um, work that was their own content and. ILM as a company of Disney and that is also quite close to the client side they're linked to a lot of production so that's kept me engaged and more interested in that um you see again the much bigger piece of those projects and maybe just 50 shots in a sequence here and there um so I think I've been able to feed that eagerness by mm -hmm. finding those roles in those companies eventually yeah. What would you change in your career? <laughs> <laughs> well, would I change? Uh, I mean, personally, like I've got about 10 years of experience. Like I wouldn't change anything. Uh, like even if I worked uh, like really, really, really hard on in some companies or they didn't treat, treat me well, I always learned new stuff. So not only technically, but also on the human side, how do you deal with the, like with a particular situation? Uh, how do you like, react, like how do you react um, with the client? Uh, how do you deal with, uh, with people with, like reacting to stress? Uh, really, for me, I wouldn't change anything. Uh, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it's a good answer. I think, well, if you change something, then back into the unknown and, and yeah. you just had this experience of growth and learning. Yeah, I think I've been quite lucky in my roles and positions and, and enjoyed a lot of it. And mm. certainly, as you say, there's been times where there's been projects you don't want to ever look at again, but you wouldn't take them back. <laughs> yeah, and once to be honest, the time I was, the, the time as well does the thing, like after one, two years, you're like, Okay. This part of the job was fun, you know what I mean? Like you try to to put the good the good side of it <laughs> once after once everything calmed down and like, like oh it's okay this this was good I, I, I learned this I know now how to manage the team I know how to do that so yeah yeah with time I feel like we're more keen to I wouldn't say forgive but, but to be more calm <laughs> <laughs> about, about some situation. Uh, one thing I really like as a question is what does your typical work uniform look like and do you think closed presentation is important in your job? I'm asking you this question because I'm sure as an Australian uh, we have a different approach about that um, because in France like you, you, I wouldn't say it's everywhere but you need to like you need to wear a specific clothes especially if you deal with, with, with clients I always feel like you have this pressure to wear something nice and <laughs> yeah i think there's a presentation aspect there if, particularly if you're working with clients that's, mm. that i definitely agree um i haven't ever had to use it to wear a uniform yeah no, the same, yeah. um but since working from home i've definitely had my ug boots on mm. <laughs> i don't know if you're in <laughs> a set of ug boots yet <laughs> oh that's fine <laughs> And how um, do you how, how do you how do you feel walking from home with this with this situation? 
Um, the situation, obviously, that's different. But I've enjoyed working from home. I've had two year olds so in the last couple of years, and he was mm -hmm. to watch him grow up more and take five, 10 minute break here and mm -hmm. play with him or put him to sleep. That, mm -hmm. that's, that's just been time that I wouldn't have had otherwise. So I've been pretty grateful for that. Um, yeah, and then um, just being able to be home for dinner is yeah. uh, is great. Even if I have to go back to work, at least I'm not stuck in the office. I'm I'm at home, mm -hmm. have dinner with the family, and finish up what I was doing mm -hmm. an hour later. And you know that's that's been that's been good too. Just being able to find that time that I wouldn't otherwise have. Yeah, but you definitely need to separate that workspace and. I think that's where the uniform comes into it. Yeah. <laughs> Want to get dressed for work and mm. go to work and mm. have that separation of finishing for the day and mm. not just always at the computer. For, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I've got a, a space here. Yeah. Yeah. How uh, do you so, find it? Uh, I mean, I thought that, I mean, from the beginning, I thought that I would have a, an issue with it because I like going to work. I like, like going to the office just to see people, but also in terms of mindset, uh, I really like working in a workplace and not from, I always had issues with that. Um, but so far, to be honest, I quite enjoy it because you don't need to spend 30 minutes, an hour to, <laughs> in the public transport to, to, to go there. back home, yeah. yeah, to get there or just to go yeah. home. You just like, yeah, you wake up and you're like, oh, I can do things. And like, I can go for a drug, I can go for a walk. Uh, I can do that. Yeah. But this is then when once like you clock out, you're like, oh, I can do stuff. <laughs> after. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. After all. So somehow it's 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 a bit hard for me because I like seeing people and talking to people like on, on Zoom or, or Teams, it's it's completely different. Uh I mean you have different things with people, especially when you're new, like no one knows you obviously, so there's a bit of a of a distance. Uh in the chat but uh so far I can't yeah. Have it to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah yeah how did you find that experience of starting a new position completely remote i, I tried before to work from home like in some job that i had before in france uh, that i really didn't enjoy it uh, so i was a bit, a bit scared of that but to be honest now i'm like i'm quite like no there's like good, really good things about it <laughs> <Do that>. yeah, <laughs> like I, 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 I miss the contact of people the, the contact of people but like i really enjoy like being at home somehow and like uh, you can take 10 years break uh like can play with the cat with the dog uh like you you you're you're already home like once you go out and you know you don't need to spend like a lot of time in the public transport or, yeah. you, or you're not stuck at work uh, waiting for things to to be delivered yeah, exactly. you can just like oh, okay i'm just going to cook something or go to the shop like buy, buy some food and and once you come, come back, back like nothing has changed you're still waiting on the so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so that's good so yeah, yeah no that's a big one yeah <laughs> But I understand as a like as a like as a father, no, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, that time, just exactly that, and just duck out and have dinner with the family while you're waiting for a shot. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. What, one can be interesting. Like, what what is your biggest uh, piece of advice for someone who aspires who like who aspires to work in the GFX editorial? Yeah, I think it's um it can be a great stepping stone too if 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 you find a position like that it can be that technical side you don't have the pressure of that creative side and that can be often difficult to find as an entry-level job so it's mm -hmm. it's um it can certainly be or for what you and i have done the long-term job too it, it can feel both both aspects of that um i think it leans more to someone who enjoys a bit more technical aspects to to um Editing, uh, yeah, I think it's one of the one, one of the key uh, in that job. It's like you need to, I mean, you need to make sure that you're not going to do anything creative, uh, like properly speaking, you're not going to edit anything, uh, or just a bit of show reels of the movie, or this, or, or, or this kind of stuff. But you're not going to edit the movie. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, but like if you like, if you like. Uh, the, techn the technology side of it and 
if you have a good sense of organization, that is definitely something that I will recommend. Um, yeah. And a good communication as well. Yeah, and, and it can certainly stay like there is there are VFX editors on films and they have those creative roles mm -hmm. that this that can stem from these mm -hmm. jobs at vendor side. Um if that is somewhere you want to get to mm -hmm. a good experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are you most proud of in your career? For, for, um, for, for, for me, something that I'm quite proud of, uh, like in London, I worked on the first uh, Indian TV series for Netflix called uh, Selection Day. Um, and we didn't do much on it. Like, um, it's not like a big UGFX show, uh, but I was very really proud to work on, on, on this. Uh, like, yeah, and, and, and one of the things on, on, on the human side, uh, I'm really glad that I managed assistant editor, uh, mm -hmm. editors very well in the sense that uh, they didn't know anything about it. And uh, at the end, they were managed to deal with their own shows and uh, didn't have to ask questions to me. Uh, at some point, it's something that I feel like it's rewarding. Um, yeah, I think, I think that I'd agree with that. It's rewarding to mm -hmm. see people that you've brought in, uh, learn and take those skills on and keep doing the jobs and succeeding that's that's definitely mm -hmm. rewarding mm -hmm. yeah and I, I i don't know about you but i found out with like people uh that are 19 20 years old that just came out from school they know more it stuff than you who are more like from like from a different generation because i think from a generation we grew up the computer it was the beginning of computers of modern computers uh if you know what i mean and i feel like yeah. with this young generation like it's like they're already into it and sometimes i'm like why why did you do this <laughs> 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 like what do you how did you make that so fast like uh, i feel like there is like uh like uh, a communication between the like yeah between uh as intended editors who are very young and like they already know like the shockers and like, everything and and like, yeah, it's like, a, it's like very interesting. <laughs> I think that there's definitely a, you need to keep up with that. And yeah. I'm definitely behind in, in some of those applications, like definitely not as quick in Premiere or Resolve. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Once you, you, you can do a lot more. And to be honest, when you start using Avid or computer or another software for a very long time, it's very hard to put <laughs> Two nodes of software, it's one of the issues as well. I, I, I'm like, oh, I just to mix, use Mix Studio or have it, and, and suddenly I use a different software in that way. So, how does it work? <laughs> you feel like you're starting from scratch again. So, yeah, you're not making TikTok videos then? Yeah, no. But <laughs> <laughs> like, really, though. <laughs> yeah. Why someone should consider joining Blue Collar Post Collective? I'm in their Facebook page, and I went to some of their meetings where, where I was working in Adelaide. It's perfect for networking, really, uh, especially if you want to step into this in industry. Uh, it's it's like the perfect way to meet people, to, to have a chat. Like they are just human beings, really. Uh, they act like you and me. Uh, yeah. And. Like they're very happy to share their experience as well. Uh, like it can be as an editor or post producer or whatever. Uh, and yeah, I feel like it's one of the most important thing, especially when you, I mean, in your career, but also when you come out from, from school. Uh, like we don't, like basically, I mean, for sure you, you agree with that, but we don't care if uh, the assistant editor knows all the microbes by filmography <laughs> by heart or like all the uh, science fiction movies or whatever. Uh, it's really like networking is one of the most uh, important things. Uh, like There's always people, productions being made and, and people needing people to help. Um, when you go to those meetings as well, you're building up a community. I mean, you're in a community. So, yeah. yeah, going to those meetings, like just having a beer uh, or like uh, some chips or whatever, like uh, just for a drink, uh, it's the best way to make those connections. Yeah. yeah, to make those connections and yeah. to step into this industry. Yeah.